the national inquiry to a certain complete solution 13 that report is out. But the government have set up a task force committee to look into it, our 18 recommendation. And they have more or less accepted 17 out of 18. Uh, and then they set up another so-called cabinet committee to look into its implementation in the short term, long, medium term, and long term. You know? But uh, what is important is the follow-up action by the state government. Because as you know, land is under the state. So Swakam is interested to see what action the can participate. This is a very slow process. So we understand that. So after this, there needs to be action taken to follow up on that uh, recommendation on our national inquiry. <coughs> so that will take some time and it will be a problem. This requires support from various stakeholders, not just Swakam. We are only the, the body to reserve initiate and try to coordinate. But we need support from NGOs, civil society, and more important, the government, the state government have to take action and adopt. Because they, this may require change of policy, change of the law, regards to land. And as you know, land, Sabah has its own ordinance, Sarawak has its own land code, Spanish has their own, affecting indigenous people. You know? So this is the, this is the context. Thank you. Thanks. And actually, uh, on the part of uh, uh, Jaws, is more like uh, national, uh, local news. <laughs> uh, during the World Indigenous Post Day celebration in KL, we actually went to the um, the secretariat of this uh, cabinet committee, which is the Bagian Integrity then, uh, and um, Good Governance, Urus uh, Tadbir, B2, um, which was set up you know, to follow up on, on the recommendation. So, um, but it's you know, it's been a year since the, uh, it was first, this cabinet committee was uh, established in April of 2015, right? Uh, yeah, year. yes. And then uh, they only had a meeting in uh, 2016, April, yes. and we, we wanted to, we sent a memorandum in August of 2016 uh, to, to B2 to try and push them, you know, to, to do something about the inquiry report. Uh, why it was presented here is because this, uh, much of the, uh, actually many of the complaints also have to do with, you know, agribusiness in the national inquiry. So that's one. So I, I also want to, I gave you some, uh, sorry, we'll making a few more copies. Uh, these were, this actually background paper, in two, two areas, Two areas uh, in in Sabah that uh, some of the participants went to visit. These are in Bigol, uh, which is in Pensiangan, and the other one is in um, in Sungai Iloy, uh, Putas. So the uh, in Bigol um, is related to the um, uh, the communal title and these areas. It gives you some background there. But after the fact-finding mission, uh, the, the main findings and actually the request of the community is that uh, these areas which the community did not actually, they, they are part of the communal title, but uh, they did not sign the joint venture to grow all the land. And they were not, uh, you know, they, they still went and opened the land anyway. And, and so the community is saying that uh, this area of 876 acres, which they consider communal land, should be uh, returned to the community. In any way, they did not sign the joint venture, uh, you know, uh, agreement, uh, which the others did. Um, the area in which they had their source of water, the catchment was also destroyed. So there's something that they feel the company should compensate them for, and especially the gravity water system. And they, for them, you know, because uh, they would like the company to also take responsibility to replant that area. You know, in, in short, uh, those, but uh, some of the background you, you can find, and actually some of the communities are here if you, uh, if you wish to have other questions with them. The other, uh, area that we, uh, which we went to have some uh, fact-finding mission was uh, in uh, Sumai Deloy. Uh, it actually affects six uh, villages uh, in Vitas. I think you have already uh, covered those areas in, in the past in, uh, in the news. Um, it's for shrimp farming. Uh, 
uh, more than 2,000 acres has already been open, but the community uh, have been defending 1,000 acres of their land, which they consider uh, now the most important, uh, and it's already <coughs> sort of open. So they, you know, again, they have also had taken uh, actions to, to, to you know, replant some of the mangrove, uh, but they are in a process of discussion on, on what can be done for them who, who wants to defend. And they, uh, these are the sort of, I think, important uh, impact uh, of the, the conference itself where the visit is, uh, is an opportunity for them to um, look for solutions, not just talk about the issues, but also talk about the solutions for, this, uh, for these areas that they feel very concerned. I mean, um, take for example the oil palm in uh, Bigor, in uh, the cabinet, as you know, has, I mean, you may, not, you may know, has already committed that by 2025, uh, all the oil palm that comes from Sabah will be 100% certified as sustainable. Uh, I mean, that's so important. I mean, any, if any of the production of oil palm not certified, they will have a hard time looking for markets. So I think all these, uh, we also had the RSPO, for example, speaking about this jurisdictional approach. And Sabah have taken that uh, move, old move, I think, to, uh, to, to ensure that you know we, we are going for agribusiness, but it should also comply to international standards. So I'll, I'll stop here. Uh, Marcus, if you have anything to add, and then we'll maybe take some questions from, from <coughs> okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask. Maybe that's a bit of an overload, but... <laughs> In, um, in Bali in 2011. Then we have one in Cambodia in 2012, um, focusing on the need for ASEAN to take cognizance through its uh, own human rights body, the AICHR. Um, the, the next one was the one in Bangkok, um, and that focused on the problems of transboundary investment. Particularly in Myanmar, and then the next year we were in Myanmar, and we're <coughs> talking in the context of a reform of the national land policy. And then last year we were in Pal in Palawan in the South Philippines, looking at some specific cases, and again looking at the national framework. And now we are here. So, what we can point to as a results of this, uh, quite a few things actually. It's quite encouraging. Uh, firstly, there has been progress on specific cases that have come to the attention of the, of the, of the, the meeting. List. So there's been progress on a land grab in um, Cambodia by a sugar plantation company. Um, and the investors from overseas have been meeting with the communities to provide remedy for the land grabbing. It's not completely sorted out, but that's a big step for those communities. Uh, in the case of um, the Thai Commission, they've been able to show that as a commission, they have a mandate to look into transboundary investments in other countries, not just what is going on within Thailand. So that's really <coughs> given a, a strength to the relevance of the commission uh, to work on Thai capital investments in uh, the, the rest of the region. So they've been looking at Laos, 
we heard today or yesterday from the Myanmar Human Rights Commission how they've been able to fortify the, the national land policy as a result of this engagement. Um, they seem quite optimistic about the way uh, they can uh, move forward now that there's been a freeze on the handout of new concessions in the country. So some of the thinking coming through these meetings hopefully will feed down into practical change, but that's still in process. And then in, um, in the Philippines, what's happened as, as a follow-up is that there's been a um, review at the national level of uh, the gaps in the law between what uh, are the treaty obligations of the state with regard to human rights and what are the obligations they're placing on companies operating in the country. So they, they realize there are some gaps that need to be filled in and already they're discussing two uh, bills in the local uh, Congress, the National Congress in, in the Philippines to block some of those new problems in the law. So at the same time, they've been able to bring to the attention of the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples and the Human Rights Commission of the Philippines the specific uh, human rights abuses occurring in Palawan with the palm oil sector. And there's been a, a great deal of uh, international attention about those particular projects. But it has to be said those problems aren't solved. The, the, the land grabbing is continuing. And in Indonesia, which hosted this process, um, we've heard today there's been a, some major changes. Um, there's, been a, there's been a freeze on the handout of new palm oil concessions. Now, we can't claim credit that this process is only responsible for all these things, but this has definitely been contributory to these, these, these changes. So we see these conferences as um, uh, sort of catalyzing change in the, in the region. Now what we can do in, uh, in Sabah, that, that, that will be for the next months to show. Well, but that definitely I think the, um, I don't know, as I said, we had the RSPO here talking about the jurisdictional approach. Uh, I think uh, for, for the steering committee it was established by the government, it's the first. I think uh, here we hope that um, you know, it comprise of one third uh, sort of government, one third private sector, and also one third from the civil society. <coughs> so it's, it's it's the first to me, uh, and I think it's part of, in a way, the you know the thoughts that, that come from agribusiness and how all farm uh, should be managed in a sustainable manner. Uh, that's been discussed in this. Forum has really you know, helped us to, to frame or look for uh, options of, of that kind. I think we can also say, quickly, <coughs> Francis, that we have noted during this meeting that there is a failure of protection of native customary rights in Malaysia as a whole. Um, and that's been highlighted from Peninsula and from Sarawak. So there are the, unfortunately, the, the reality is that land grabbing continues and native people are losing their, their lands and their rights. And so this has to be addressed. It's about implementation, it's about political will, and it may also be that there's a need for some legal reform to plug the gaps. Yeah, I think what we, as you are aware, what we, when we talk about uh, uh, land rights of indigenous people. There are existing law in Peninsula Malaysia involving involving the Pulau Asli in Sabah Sarawak on on land. So uh, what has been mentioned is that under the current policy and legislation, there are existing sort of weaknesses, point weaknesses. Law. That is why there are disputes when it comes to claims over native customary land involving plantation, involving timber companies. So, and also the remedies available, there are weaknesses. That is why there are disputes and takes time to settle. So these are the issues which are coming up and hasn't been able to <coughs> be, no, no, 
no solution yet lah. Of course, apart from the case going to court and all that. So these are what what is uh, currently available, and that's why we had our national inquiry before, you know. And at the moment, it's question of implementation, and we are hoping the government to really look for other to revise existing law and policy. But of course, that will take some time. So that is uh, one of the things. But coming back to what I said earlier, I wish I forgot to mention. Swakam project on business and human rights, you know, there is a basis, you know, I think you need to know something about the UN guiding principles, that is important, you know, there is a document called the United Nations guiding principles, which has been adopted since 2011, and some countries are implementing that, so under this UN guiding principle, there are three important pillars or principles, one is the duty of the state or the government to protect human rights, meaning that they have an obligation to protect the whoever is being affected like, you know, to take action, so that other people do not violate for human rights, and the people can be you need know, to protect. Second principle is the duty of the of business company to respect, respect human rights. It means that <coughs> when they carry out the operations, it must be in such a way that they respect human rights and does not breach human rights. And if they do breach, because sometimes cannot be avoided, you know, then the third principle comes in. There must be access to a remedy, mm. either through the courts or through the mediating process. So that is important. These three components, duty, uh, state duty to protect, responsibility of the company to respect, and access to remedy. Mm. So these are what we call the guiding principles of the UN on business and human rights, which our SWACAM is trying to propagate and also disseminate information and hoping the government to adopt to our national action plan. That is uh, that important component. Thank you. Uh, and you wanted to ask a lot of questions? Um, yeah, well, you mentioned just now about protect, state duty to protect right. and business to respect all this. In terms of uh, Awareness. Yeah. How, how far have you know? Because a lot of this is uh, civil society driven. Yes, yes. But in, on the part of governments and uh, business, as a whole, can we? What level is the awareness to the point of the, they they would want to this protect and respect? Yeah. Uh, where are we now yeah, on that part? I think to me, from my my observation, I've been with Swakam for the last. Uh, this is my second term. Two zero one three. Yeah? And of course, uh, on a part of our human rights commission, this is part of our mandate to create awareness through education on human rights in general. So this is what we've been doing and continue to do. And I think CSO so does have to play the part, not just on land but at the <coughs> But when it comes to this subject of agribusiness or other business and human rights, I think the, the awareness is there, but we need to play our own respective role to mirror, to further arrest the, the awareness aspect. I think all the time when it comes to business, I think in Malaysia especially, they talk about the CSR, remember? Yeah. The corporate social responsibility. But to us, uh, that is a voluntary thing. CSR is important, but it is not continuous. So if we want to make the step, take one step further to incorporate the so-called business, uh, so business, the human rights base approach, uh, the human rights base. So it becomes to be incorporated into their business of operation. That is what we want. Yes. It becomes a policy and take it up, uh, take forward yeah. from, you know, by, the buy you know, approach, you know. Once they incorporate that, it is at all levels of supply, whatever, through activity. That is what we want in the end. But of course, this takes some time, you know, but uh, at least that is why when we have our round table discussion, we invite various other, quite a number of major players you know, to come up. But of course, we expect them, hopefully they will understand, and then slowly they incorporate in their business operation. That is what our objective is. Yeah? <coughs> so in the, at the end of the day, yeah, there's no need for us to remind or tell them. It is already in their own operations. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, when you talk about being a human rights, not just a question of affecting the natives or indigenous, but even their own employees, remember? Uh, the question of uh, wages, rights, employers, and others, you know? and the way apart from the effect. Right? So a lot of uh, matters come in uh, when you talk about that. Sometimes we take for granted, you know, when you own employees' rights, labor rights, migration workers, people from other countries come in. So. Mm -hmm. I think I expect uh, anyone uh, housing, 
and social aspect, you know, social protection. These are important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perhaps I can add something. Yeah. Um, in terms of this question, has there really been a, re a rise of awareness of the government about these issues? I think we've heard in this meeting that there is some uh, raised awareness expressed in the form of moratoriums on the handing out of concessions because they realize that there, are, there are so many conflicts. So that's happened in Laos, in Cambodia, and it's just been announced for Indonesia as well, but not yet made law. So this is a, a recognition that there is a problem and that some reforms are needed. And then we have heard from some countries how they're beginning to talk about a reform in the sector heard about Indonesia, they're going to be reallocating land towards indigenous peoples and towards um, agrarian reforms. Um, and policy discussions are happening in Myanmar and in Laos and so on. So we've, we've got that. And then here in Sabah, we've been hearing about this piloting of, of the jurisdictional approach. So we can say there is there obviously some awareness, maybe not enough, but there's, there's certainly awareness that there's an issue of conflict over the land because of agriculture. And then there has been some response to think through things at the policy level. How much that's really getting through to changing things on the ground, that's what we haven't seen yet. So you know, there's a lot of work to be done. There's some good cases where we've had isolated uh, successes, but um, the, the need is for implementation. And uh, that's what this, these conferences try to push forward. Hello. I mean, I think it's not just in Southeast Asia. Um, uh, over the years now, since that, uh, you know, the, the, the guiding principles of business and human rights uh, at the UN level also, um, they have had now you know, a lot of uh, forum. In particular, for example, they have, uh, I think they meet my, maybe two times a year, at least the forum on business and human rights will be meeting later on uh, this year in November. Um, <coughs> And uh, I think that shows the heightened awareness globally. Um, the fact that you know the, the member states in the UN have uh, agreed to have more forum, more discussion, uh, the governments themselves, so that you know there are. And, and in this forum, the, the business, uh, you know, private sector has been coming in as well. So I think. Uh, on, on that level, uh, I don't think it will happen. We will have this, you know, frequent uh, discussion at the UN if governments themselves are, uh, you know, uh, are not open, are not willing to, to pursue it. So we do see uh, you know, changes, at least at that conceptual level. And, uh, so I'll add like it. <laughs> Yeah, I mentioned that so I come to push the Malaysian government to adopt the guiding principles. Yeah, yes, the land guiding principles <coughs> on uh, <coughs> business and human rights. You can uh, how far did you? Uh, no, we are, we just initiated the project. We come up with a strategic framework on national action plan on business and human rights, and we have submitted to the government our concept, hoping that the government would take it up because uh, the duty is on the government to have a national action plan. You know, the ownership is on the government. Yes. We are only initiating it so that the government take it up. But when, once the government, as you know, the government process is, they have to have a decision, they have to have a policy on it. Once that policy is adopted, then they will implement. And uh, just for information also, at the same time, SUACAM is also uh, hoping that the government will come up a national action plan on human rights, which is a bigger one. They have been working on it for the past few years. Yes. But uh, now the government has appointed a consultant mm -hmm. to have a draft. So that is another project which we are much involved in, mm -hmm. but on a bigger scale, <coughs> that is on national action plan on <coughs> human rights as a whole. Mm -hmm. Business and human rights is in a smaller aspect. Mm -hmm. So that is just for info on it. So a similar thing. It's on business and human rights. That is the, to initiate the <coughs> national action plan on business and human rights. <coughs> I have yet to, uh, they have yet to decide. 
In fact, we have prepared a cabinet paper on it. Submitted that to Polo, but the government has not decided. Uh, hopefully soon, uh, at least the, the company. Uh. So one, but the minister himself is supportive of it. In fact, he, he came to launch our strategic framework. There's a booklet you know, print published. So the minister himself uh, launched it, and then he, he will take it up. You know, but how, how successful we are getting on. So we are opt optimistic. Like. No, 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 no. This is, this is out of our hands. But we, we have started it, so we are hoping the government would uh, take it up. So that is what 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 are uh, what are things we are doing you know, on this subject. Any kind of opposition to your moves from the business community? Uh, you we, we know before that we had our sort of uh, discussion. We invited the major companies in Peninsular Malaysia to get in, in addition to GRC. Uh, no specific, uh, I'm not aware of any specific objection, but this is, like I said, it's still an initial stage. You know? But later on, they, they have to be brought in uh, when it comes to the, the overall plan, definitely. Just like uh, when you do a national action plan, where do, what, depending on what subject, definitely you need to have uh, inputs and views from various stakeholders. So hopefully this will be incorporated later on, you know, when the time comes. But uh, uh, <coughs> so far we have not, uh, it's not something easy, and we have to acknowledge that, to get somebody to incorporate in their own business operations, but at least certain aspect will be important as a start, you know? Because when you talk about plan, you can start with something small first. And later you have to review every now and then, you know? So this is uh, the same in every country when they have an action plan. They, they can be reviewed. Yeah. But I mean, at the local level, yeah. the communities do face quite a lot of opposition when they are asking for their rights to be recognized. Yeah. And then sometimes they take their cases to court. And then you know, we find that companies then trying to block them getting access to court or <coughs> appealing the cases when they go in favour of the community. So you have to say, yes, there is opposition to respectful rights from these companies. And that's exactly what we need to address. They need to respect the rights, not try to challenge them all the time. There was uh, actually a presentation uh, Malaysia from the community where they, they find that actually even in Sarawak in particular, there were some violence also uh, of human rights defenders or those who, who are trying to protect uh, the, the area. So these are some of the more, you know, something that they're concerned uh, when it's a serious concern and things uh, get violent, of course. <coughs> anticipate that there will be a resolution from this meeting, um, but that will be for the whole forum to adopt at the end of the second day. So that could be made available uh, later today if we get consensus. Yes, because we still have to meet. We haven't yet. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're still halfway through. Yeah. Yeah. We just thought we'll have this conference now and then... We can email you. We can email you the... Normally, in uh, in many of these, in, in all, actually, so far, uh, all the conferences we have after we finish, they, they come up with a, uh, a statement. If you leave a if you leave an email, we can just make sure we get that this evening. If we have it, <laughs> it might be. Definitely uh, following up on the once we have you know, a statement or maybe uh, uh, at the end of the meeting, we can send it to you. Uh, but you can call us if you have any other questions. Um, 
on you know, the spaces that we went to, uh, I mean, these uh, areas that we went to, and uh, any others? Marcus and uh, Francis, uh, all are here still, uh, but they're nearby, we can easily access them as well. Yes, uh, well, 